Hello and welcome to the session in which we'll discuss uh, the third income tax problem which involved the third tax assets and the third tax liabilities. In my opinion, if you can understand this problem, if you can solve this problem, you should be able to answer any questions you are faced with on the CPA exam or in, an inter in your intermediate accounting course. The only two things I kept out of this problem is permanent differences and allowances, which I believe they are minor relative to the topics that we're going to be discussing today because if you can solve this problem you should be able to understand how permanent differences work how allowances work obviously i have lessons and examples for for those two aspects permanent differences and allowances in a separate session first i'm going to go over what we are giving then i'm going to tell i'm going to tell you what we need to compute then we're going to go ahead and compute it so the following fact relate to adam corporation the third tax liability January 1st, 60,000. The third taxed asset, January 1st, 20,000. This is X1, year X1. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start by basically plugging in, creating a T account, the third taxed asset, 20,000, the third tax liability is 20,000. Taxable income for 20 X1 is 210. Well, we need to understand this is the IRS taxable income. So we are responsible for paying taxes on $210,000. Cumulative temporary differences at December 31st given rise to a future taxable amount of 460000 Well, what does that mean? It means by the end of the year, your future taxable amount, your future, future taxable amount now is 460 and we're going to see how we use, we're going to use this information. Remember, before we see how we're going to be using this information, what does future taxable amount mean? What does it result into? Result in DTL. Because if you have future taxable amount, it's going to result in future taxes. You have more responsibilities, more liabilities. Cumulative temporary differences at December 31st given rise to future deductible amount 190,000. What do future deductible amount give rise to future deductible amount give rise to deferred tax asset and they they should be 190 the tax rate for all years is 20 percent again i'm also not playing not changing future tax rate which is 20 percent that's something i also i ignored in this problem no permanent differences as i told you i'm not going to discuss this the company which is discussed in a separate session with the comprehensive example the company is expected to operate profitably in the future profitably in the future it means there's no need to create an allowance okay everything is giving the first thing we need to compute is pre-tax financial income or gap income because we are giving irs income sometimes you are giving irs you have to come up to gap which is pre tax financial income sometimes you might be giving pre-tax financial income and going to irs you need to know how to go back and forth between the two and this is a, not a tricky this is the you have to have a good understanding of it which we will work in this problem then they're going to ask us to prepare journal entries to record income tax expense deferred income taxes income taxes payable then prepare the income statement section to show how the income statement expense is presented let's go ahead and get started now Starting with, uh, we are told here that future taxable um, a future taxable future taxable amount is four hundred and sixty thousand. That's fine. What does future taxable amount lead to? Lead to D to L. Now we already have in deferred tax liability D to L already sixty thousand. So because we have already sixty thousand, this sixty thousand arises from some difference in the past so this this 60000 is coming from somewhere it's coming from somewhere what is that somewhere well we had some differences in the past and it gave us 60000 in deferred tax liabilities well what does that mean it means sometime in the past we had a difference and that difference we multiplied by 20% gave us 60000 so we had some difference some future tax some future taxable amount that future taxable amount if we multiply it by 20%, will give us 60,000. Therefore, to find the 300,000, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna work backward, take the 600,000 divided by 0 0.2, 20%, will give us, this is the previous, this is the previous taxable amount. This is the amount from previous year that gave us this existing $60,000 that's giving in the problem. Now, what we are told, what we are told is this, we are told that the cumulative, 
cumulative temporary differences that give rise to a future bar taxable amount is 460. It means the future bar taxable amount actually increased, went from 300 to 460. So it went from 300 to 460. Therefore, 460, which is giving to us minus 300 that we computed, it means this year we have additional future taxable income of 1660. What does that mean? It means our deferred tax liability, it's going to increase. It's not reversing, it's increasing. It's increasing. How much it's increasing by? It's 20% of 160. So we have an additional $32,000 to book in deferred tax liabilities. So there was no reverse in deferred tax liabilities. If anything, deferred tax liabilities went up. So deferred tax liabilities could go up. Deferred tax liabilities could go down, which is it means it reverse for this year. Actually, it kept on increasing. Therefore, what we need to do, we need to increase deferred tax liabilities by 32000 so now the balance in the deferred tax liabilities is, is 92. You could be asked, you could be given this sets of facts and ask, what is the balance in the deferred tax liability at the end of the year? Or what is the adjusting entry? Well, the adjusting entry 32,000, which we will discuss later. So this is how we compute the deferred tax liability component, which we have to increase by 32,000. The next thing we look at is the deferred tax asset. But before we do so, I would like to remind you whether you are a student or a CPA candidate. You must be either a student or a CPA candidate to be watching this. This is how you end up here. If you end up here, great. What I'm going to ask you to do is to go to my website, farhatlectures.com. Take a look at my material. I can help you pass the CPA exam. I provide supplemental material that's going to help you with your accounting courses and your CPA. Resources such as lectures, PowerPoint, PowerPoint, multiple choice, true, false. This is a list of all my accounting courses, actually a partial list. My CPA material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Gleam, Wiley, any other CPA review course you are taking. I give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with other. If it's helping you, obviously you are watching me. Please share it with other. It might help other. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. And I started a CPA exam support group for CPA candidate. Please join us to discuss your CPA exam journey with me as well as with other CPA candidates. Now let's focus on the third taxed asset. Already in the third taxed asset, we have $20,000. Well, this $20,000 is a deferred uh, is a deferred tax asset. Well, so wh wh how did that $20,000 came into existence? Sometime in the past, we had 20,000 divided by 0.2, we had $100,000 of future deductible amount. So 100,000 times 20% equal to 20,000. So this is how 20,000 came into existence. Now we don't know why. For example, maybe I should have just maybe a little bit, little, be a little bit more specific. Uh, for example, this addition, this 300,000 in the past was the result of the difference in accrual income and cash income. So let's go back to here to the deferred tax liability. Why did we why did we have this $300,000 and the additional 160, it could be that we are debiting account receivable, crediting sales. It means we are recording revenues for certain transaction on a cruel basis. And we did not receive the cash yet. Therefore, it's not taxable. That's why it's going to give us future taxable amount, which is D2L. Just kind of so you know where this 300,000 coming from. This is one, one source of it. The deductible amount, this could be, for example, where we have a... Uh, where we have a warranty. When we have a warranty, what we do is for uh, financial accounting purposes, we debit warranty expense, credit a liability. This is for financial accounting purposes. For tax purposes, we don't do anything because we don't expense the warranty until we pay for it. Therefore, what's going to happen, this warranty, it's going to give us future deductible amount. Just in case you're wondering, what does, what does future taxable, what does future taxable amount mean? What does future deductible amount mean? Well, I have a whole lesson, like 20 minute lesson explaining every aspect of this. But the point here is, in the past, we had 100,000 of deductible amount. Now, what we have now is they're telling us this amount, this amount, the cumulative amount went to 190. It means, again, the deferred tax could reverse, the deferred tax could go up here. The deferred tax, it looks, it went up. It went from 100 to 190. So 190 minus 100, it increased by 90,000. Again, now we have to increase our deferred tax asset. We'll take 90,000 times 20% will give us 18,000 in additional deferred taxes. Therefore, we add 18,000 to 
18,000 to our deferred taxed asset, and our deferred taxed asset is 38,000. Well, we did all this computation, but we have not, we have not answered any of the questions that we are giving, actually partially, but this is what you have to do. This is what you have to answer to answer all the questions. Again, back to the question. Original question is, what is gap income for this company? What is gap income? Because we are giving IRS income. We are not giving gap income. We are giving IRS income is 210. Now, what we have to do is this. How do we go from gap income to IRS income? Here's what we do. We'll take gap income, then we'll find the differences, whatever those differences are, and we'll get to the IRS income. Well, do we have gap income? No, we don't have gap income. So a gap income, pre-tax financial income is X. It's unknown. But we know, we know for a fact that there was an increase in temporary difference of 160. What does that mean? It means somehow when we got to when we got to pre-tax financial income, we had 160,000, and I said this is gonna be revenue on a cruel basis. So this pre-tax financial income should, in should include 160,000 in revenue, which is not revenue for tax purposes, because this increase in, this increase in income led to a future taxable amount. It means we have to deduct this 160. So whatever X is, pre-tax financial income, we have to deduct 160. Also, we know, that this number pre-tax financial income X included a deduction of 90,000. Remember the deduction I assumed, I told you, let's assume this is a warranty expense. So we deducted 90,000, we added to revenue 160 to come up with pre-tax financial income. When we're going from pre-tax financial income to IRS income, we have to do the opposite. We have to add this 90,000 that we deducted. Now, so X, which is pre-tax financial income, gap income, minus 160 plus 190 gave us the IRS income that's given to us 210. Now, all we have to do is solve for X. If my math is right, pre-tax financial income or gap income is 280,000, 280. So I hope this makes sense. I, I hope this makes sense because if you understand how we went from gap to IRS, it means you know the differences. And this is helpful when you are completing your income tax course and you are looking to complete Schedule M1. So if you're familiar with Schedule M1, this is easy for you or it should be understandable. Okay, so actually finally good. We answered the first question. Gap pre-tax financial income is 280 Thousand, while IRS, we're going to only pay the IRS based on 210,000. Okay, now let's see if we can prepare the journal entry for income tax expense, deferred income taxes, and income taxes payable, and present. So, this is the same information that I did the computation for in the next slide. Again, when we do the journal entry, as I always tell you in the previous recording, we start by computing income taxes payable. How do we compute income taxes payable? We take IRS income multiplied by the tax rate. So our income taxes payable is 42,000. We credit income taxes payable 42,000. So this is part of the entry. We already computed the increase in deferred taxes. We're gonna increase deferred taxes, debit deferred taxes 18,000. We already computed the increase in deferred tax liability 32. We credit deferred tax liability 32. Once again, for the sake of this example, both DTA and DTL went up. Okay, just, just it happens. Sometimes they reverse, they go down. So you have to know how to deal with this. Now, remember income tax expense, this, this number is a plug. Income tax expense is a plug. What is that plug? Well, here's what happened. We're gonna have to pay the IRS 42,000 income taxes payable, then our deferred component went up by 14. We have a net increase in assets. So 32 minus 18 equal to 14. So we have a deferred taxed asset of 14,000. It means in the future, we're gonna have additional savings on our tax. But for now, we have an income tax expense of 56,000. For now, we, the, the, the gap income is higher. Gap income is higher. Therefore, our income tax expense is higher. Why? Because we're paying 42,000 now, but we are, we are, we have future savings net 14,000 into the future, net 14,000. Therefore, if we take 74 minus 18 will give us 56. So income tax expense is a plug. Simply put, here's what I did. I said 42,000, what I have to pay now, plus I have future saving of 32 minus my future taxable amount of 18 will give me 56,000. Also, I want you, I want you to see the 
numbers of it. So this is the entry. This is the entry. And this is why I did all these computations at the beginning to get you to the entry. Now on the CPA exam, don't start to go through, the, through my computation the way I did it. They could be asking you one simple question. For example, they could only ask you, what is your income taxes payable? That's easy. I'm going to take which is giving 210 times times 20%. So don't don't start to do what I'm doing, compute deferred tax liability, compute deferred tax asset, because you don't need those numbers if the question is income tax is payable. If the question is what is the increase or decrease in deferred tax asset, you'll answer that question. First, always read the question because you could be giving so many different questions about this sets of fact. We're not done yet. The last thing we need to do is to present the income tax expense on the income statement. How do we do so? Well, we're going to take pre-tax financial income, which we already computed, 280000 minus income tax expense. Income tax expense has two components, a current component, which is income tax is payable, and the deferred component, which is a net of fourteen. So 280 minus taxes of 56000 will give us net income of 224000 This is GAAP financial statement. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and start to work multiple choice, true, false, exercises that's going to help you reinforce the concepts that you learn. Look, invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Your accounting education is important. Your professional certifications are important. You spend two to three years studying, putting, putting the certifications behind you. Then you can focus on your career for the next 20, 30, 40 years, whatever you want to do. Good luck. Study hard. Stay motivated. And of course, stay safe.